drugs and rock and roll quite like David Campbell. Although David <laughs> Bowie in the 70s did give him a run for his money along the way producing some of the world's best known songs like Heroes. Oh, look, he really is one of the definitive art pop superstars of the last century and this one. Now in a new tell-all biography we go inside the rock god's private world and his biographer Wendy Lee joins us live from London. Wendy, what a thrill to have you. Bowie is responsible. I'm thrilled to be there. Well, this great man is responsible for some of the best rock anthems of our time. What was it about him that left us all wanting more? David is such an enigma. People always say that he's a chameleon, but I actually don't think he is. I think he's a kaleidoscope. It's not that he changes colors. David is so many colors. He's an artist, he's a songwriter, he's a singer, he's a painter, he's an art director, and above all, David is an amazing self-publicist. Always has been, always will be. He's a great actor too. Yeah, Wendy, your book details... Oh yeah, of course. It, it details his long list of lovers, including a room yeah. and affair with Mick Jagger. So what sort of relationship did they have? Well, I'm not 100% sure that they had an affair. I think that's kind of deifying it a bit. But there's a picture in my book of the two of them leaving a house in the sort of early morning, and they look like two very naughty schoolboys who have been up to no good. Uh, I, I do have a source that talks about David and Mick having gone to bed with the same girl. Both of them uh, have a propensity for women of colour, and none of them have denied it. And they've actually shared lovers. Um, one of them was Claudia Linnea, for whom uh, Mick wrote Brown Sugar. Uh, David dated Bianca, I don't know whether it went further than that, Bianca, Mick's wife, Mick's first wife, and uh, they certainly uh, are very similar people on one level. They both come from the same district of London, I mean sort of East Kent, uh, Bromley, and uh, then Dartford as Mick. They both uh, started out um, using their long hair as a kind of uh, totem of their uh, unconventionality and it's quite funny because David actually went to a concert where Mick was on stage um, David was nobody he was David Jones and admiring Mick Jagger on stage and Mick got heckled because of his long hair and he came back with some very cute answers whereupon David formed a society for the protection of long hair so David actually copied Mick a lot to the degree that Mick has said be careful what shoes you wear around David because if you're not careful the next day he'll be wearing the same shoes as you did and better than you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's always a danger. Now <laughs> Bowie had uh, a lot of love affairs, a lot of very public famous ones everyone from Susan Sarandon who I didn't know about to Tina Turner but he had a special place in his heart for Elizabeth Taylor. What's going on there? Well, he and Elizabeth were kind of soulmates, just for a certain window in time, a kind of kaleidoscopic, dazzling time when David was in a, a Beverly Hills, and he and Elizabeth would talk every single day. But David was a very wild, very naughty boy. I mean, one of the best things in the book, I believe, is an interview I did with Josette Caruso, a groupie, who was a very clever girl, who spent a night with David that was phenomenal. I mean, first of all, the way David picked her up, she was wearing a mirror dress, and David looked at her and said, Oh, I can see myself in you. Which as that said afterwards, that is an amazing double entendre. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then a very interesting, David was very famous for his open marriage with Angie, so called. And in fact, one of my sources said to me that sex for David and Angie was like shaking hands after dinner. A uh, great quote and great reality. They really sex, I mean, they had orgies, they did all sorts of things. But Josette, going right back to her, that particular night, uh, Angie came over to her with a plate of cakes, seeing how David was interested in Josette, and practically threw them at Josette. Anyway, Josette met David in a hotel room. Now, most rock stars, I'm sure you know, treat groupies like dirt, but not David. David is such a gentleman. He sang to her, he gave her a pet name. As she told me, he made love to her. But uh, at the moment of satisfaction, David was very silent and then he started giggling and turned to Josette and said, oh, that was my Charlie Chaplin moment, meaning Charlie Chaplin of silent films. He was very clever, but that night, actually, um, Sonia, th there was an amazing moment where there's a knock on the door and uh, outside, the bodyguard came in and called for David. David ran out, came back ten minutes later, white as a sheet because somebody had come along with a dead body oh. offering it to David to make love to, to have sex with. And David was so horrified that his image out in the world was of somebody who would do something like that. David was so horrified. Mm. And Josette We're said, she, you know, she, she, I know, amazing, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. That's the kind of thing David had to put up with.
That's quite bizarre, isn't it, Wendy? Now, we don't see much of yeah. David Bowie in well, public no these days. People are offering him dead bodies <laughs> exactly. and cadavers for his will. Yeah. But some say mm -hmm. he's become a bit of a recluse. So where is he now? Well, what's so fascinating about David is he's had so many incarnations. You know, he was this wild bisexual boy. Uh, he sort of did everything heterosexual. And then David fell in love. It's a fairy story. He fell in love with Iman, married her 22 years ago. And since then, I mean, he's been the model monogamous husband. They live in Manhattan. They live in Soho. And uh, they do go out sometimes, but, you know, under great secrecy. In fact, he was just in London a short while ago. He was at, in Venice at the ship. Cipriani Hotel as well. I think it was Cipriani in Venice. I'm not 100 percent One of the Venice hotels. Anyway, he does travel. Very incognito. But he lives a very peaceful, very quiet life. But he's still not finished with us. He's not finished with his public. He does wonderful things like all of a sudden releasing a record without any fanfare, without any publicity. He doesn't need what other rock stars and do. He's David Bowie. And Wendy, he, we, you're exactly right. Just quickly before we go, you're the authoritarian on this now. Your favorite Bowie song? My favourite Bowie song you've just played, Heroes. Ah, a great song. Well, look, thank you so much for your uh, time this morning, Wendy. Wonderful. What? I mean, that was almost like half a novel there. Mm. So much information to digest. <laughs> thank you. If you'd like to read the Bowie biography, you can get it online now. Good Christmas present.